Welcome to the Mentor Paperless IRB. Uh, this video is uh, about the investigator's view of the system, how they submit protocols and manage their protocols. Uh, Mentor is a much larger system and includes a number of components besides the IRB system. These are modular and uh, we can switch these on and off depending on what the institution has chosen to use. So when the investigator logs into Mentor, they will click on the IRB tab and this IRB tab is for investigators. The information page is a page that's configured by the IRB administrator or chair. Uh, the content here is whatever you want to put here in terms of information and instructions to the investigator, links to documentation, whom to contact, uh, and so forth. So this is really just a blank slate that you can uh, populate with any text uh, uh, that you, you wish. Mentor has a documentation folder for each IRB uh, in the Mentor system and uh, we pre-populate this with links to important OHRP documents, the regulations, policies and so forth. Uh, we have a folder here with historical documents that we pre-populate the links for. Uh, you can upload whatever files you want to this, uh, create folders as you see fit, uh, delete, uh, etc. Um, but this is designed to be a resource for investigators and the IRB to uh, get uh, documents out into the hands of investigators or documents that you want to refer to on a regular basis. The main page for investigators is the My Protocols page. This page uh, lists the investigators uh, current protocols. You'll see, now that this is my, my page uh, at Fairfield University. Uh, I have nixed out the last names uh, for the purposes of this demo so that um, when we get to the main IRB page, uh, we'll be uh, anonymizing the uh, people who have submitted protocols. <coughs> so uh, protocols are listed here. You can see uh, who the PI is, the status of the protocol, when it was approved, if any uh, annual reports or continuing reviews are due. <coughs> uh, to create a new protocol, just click Create New Protocol. <coughs> And a uh, mentor knows who the investigator is. Uh, typically, we'll know who the, what the investigator's type is, whether they're a faculty member, staff, uh, and so forth. If there are any uh, co-PIs, uh, they can be added. Uh, this would be for internal co-PIs, people who are mem uh, members of the institution and are listed in mentor as users. External PIs can be added as well simply by typing the name of the person if you want. You can also type in their email address uh, and so forth. Uh, if there are research associates uh, involved in the protocol, they can be listed as well. Uh, these, this, is, this field is an AJAX lookup and you can add multiple people, so you add them one at a time. Uh, so you simply type in the last name uh, and select from the list that pops up and click add and then you can add additional uh, individuals. Give the protocol a title. Give the protocol a projected start date. Uh, we'll just pick May 18th. Uh, end date is optional. Investigators sometimes don't know what the end date is. Um, upload the protocol. This is a simple file upload. So we would go and look for files on the computer. Let's see if I have my favorite test document here. Uh, if a consent form is required for this protocol, uh, that can be uploaded as well. Requesting the consent form is an option that's configurable by the IRB. Some IRBs prefer to have consent forms included in the protocol template itself. So that's an option that you have. <coughs> funding source for the protocol. Uh, if there is a funding source, they can name it here. There's actually a number of additional fields that uh, can be added to this. Uh, so the funding source contact person, their phone number, and so forth. Uh, that's again an option set by the, uh, the IRB administrator uh, and chair. Review type, this is very important. Uh, the default here is full review. Uh, there's an option here for exemption requested and when they select that, Mentor displays the list of the exemption categories straight out of the regulations. So this is verbatim quotes of the, uh, re the exemption categories at 101B 1 through 6. Mentor also includes below at the definition of research uh, and so the investigator can select that they're exempt based on the fact that they're not doing research as defined by the regs. It's also a definition of <coughs> human subject uh, and so if they're doing research and it doesn't meet the uh, criteria for, for what a human subject is, they can check that. 
as well. So they can check off the exemption category. Um, whatever they select, the IRB chair and administrator can modify that selection. If they select expedited review, we give them a drop down menu of the expedited review categories. Uh, the text defining these categories was simply too long to display on the page. But again, back on the documentation page, there is uh, the full text is available. <coughs> There's also several other categories here. Quality improvement. These are <clears throat> typically protocols that um, uh, are involved in assessing the effectiveness of a program within the institution. And that generally does not qualify as research. Uh, very often they're called quality improvement. There's also an option here to delegate review to an external IRB. Uh, and if you have agreements with other IRBs, you're uh, certainly within your rights as an IRB to do that. <coughs> Subject categories. These categories are defined by the IRB itself. So this is how we have defined them at Fairfield University. You can uh, modify this list, replace this list however you see fit. If uh, the investigator has a subject type that doesn't fall into that, they can add it here as an other. Um, number of subjects that they uh, plan to enroll in the protocol. And then if there's a quick message to the chair, <coughs> uh, they can type it here. So I, this is a, this is a dummy, dummy protocol. I'm just going to cancel out of that uh, and go back here to a protocol that I've already done. And this is how the protocol will look to the investigator once they submit it. Um, <coughs> so they have the basic information up here. Uh, here is the protocol. Here is the consent form. Uh, Mentor has a reviewer system. I'm actually named as reviewer on this. This is a test protocol, so that's why it, the button shows up for me to review it. Um, that's typically not the case that uh, the investigator would be a reviewer. You can see here there's a notification that it's been approved by the chair, uh, and all, all notifications that go between the chair and the, uh, the uh, investigator are uh, written to PDF, and that becomes part of the audit trail. Because this uh, protocol was approved under expedited review, uh, there is an annual report record generated for it. Mentor auto automatically calculates a due date for that report. Uh, that due date is based on the number of weeks prior to the one-year deadline at which the protocol's uh, uh, approval would expire. Um, and that's, again, a variable that you can set. Mentor will also send out notifications, and we'll talk about that uh, in another one of these video clips. Um, but the investigator can then submit their annual report here. If the investigator has amendments, they can upload amendments uh, to the protocol. Uh, the IRB chair uh, and members of the IRB, uh, depending on how they've se selected their notification settings, uh, can get email notifications of new amendments uh, and so forth. There's also categories here for adverse events, protocol deviations, DSMB reports. These tend to be used primarily in the biomedical context. They can be switched off. That's a configuration setting uh, for, for each IRB. Uh, so those can be switched on and off. Uh, so you can configure this as, as you see fit. <coughs> The uh, investigators then can also upload additional documents, uh, and so they can, any files that are uploaded as additional documents, uh, those uh, an email notification again goes out to the chair of the IRB, indicating that uh, protocol has new documents, and that protocol will show up on the uh, mentor uh, IRB meeting agenda uh, under administrative review. So there's a place here for the investigator to submit additional documents. And that's pretty much it on the investigator side. Uh, they receive notifications and emails from the chair and from, from Mentor itself. Um, but the uh, main workings of the IRB system are on the IRB administrator side. So that will be the subject of uh, the next video clip. <coughs>